Welcome to Nerdist Book Club, live on Nerdist YouTube and Geek and Sundry's Twitch. How cool is that? I'm Maud Garrett. Joining me as always are my friends. They also have to be my co-hosts. We've got Hector Navarro and Rachel Hine. Hello, my lovelies. Hi, everybody. Oh, I turned the saturation up. I tell you what, this is, I'm beaming colors today. Hey, <laughs> cool. Thanks so much if you're joining us at home. But let's be honest, COVID is month seven if you're in America. So what else are you going to do? Uh, if you are here for the first time, what's up? I'm Sassy uh, and we are Notice Book Club, our online book club where you can break down, where well, we, sorry, break down new, I'm reading, new and favorite books in genres like horror, fantasy and science fiction. Preferably... <laughs> with something to drink. What has everyone got today? Ah, oh, yay. I've got an, an, an orange wine that's called Frankenwine. Frankenwine? I just really like it. Oh, I'm in the middle. Yeah, it's got a little, it's not sponsored. I just like this wine. I'm drinking some um, Girl and Dragon Pinot Grigio right here. Which it's pretty good. Very good. It's I, um I, I get hangovers if I have one and a half glasses of wine. So I'm um, on my basic That's bit. so sad. Yeah. Yeah. I've been getting heartburn from red wine, so. The other night we were watching a movie or something and I was gonna I was gonna grab like a second or third beer and or maybe we were drinking wine, but my girlfriend Abby was like, oh, you're gonna be hungover tomorrow. And I was, and I thought about it for a second and I went, I don't care. Nothing's happening. It's fine. I know. <laughs> Who you cares? Know, tomorrow, like. It's, it's okay. <laughs> I'm sick of that feeling. It's like a whole day is just meh. Yeah. I actually, I went for an hour long walk listening to this book on a hike. Very hungover off two glasses of wine, but shredded it out. There you go. So what is this book? We are reading Ma uh, His Majesty's Dragon by Novik. Yes. Now this is just the first volume in the Temeraire series, which takes place during an alternate history of the Napoleonic Wars where dragons fight in the Air Force. This is book one of about nine, 12, how many? Nine, I think. I'm gonna read them all. Also, Dante Arbin says, can you please shout me out? Hey, Hi, Dante. Dante. <laughs> Jeez, That's a shout out. That's hey. hey, I'm reading here, I don't know. <laughs> so we're only doing this book for three weeks, so it's four chapters a piece. Uh, very, very easy to do. A lot of people have read ahead. Hey, if that's what you want to do, I'm not going to be mad at you. I think it's kind of cool if you love a book that much that you can't stop because we are able mm -hmm. to read readings. I haven't read ahead in this one. I didn't. All right, so our uh, question for you, Maud, because you and I know people in the chat were saying that this as well and i agree uh that the audiobook leaves a little bit the narrator leaves a little bit to be desired although not everyone agrees but um you got the physical copy are you enjoying it anymore now it is just a little bit of overkill that's the issue that i had faced but i will say um i have not started reading yeah oh um, only because i I need to listen to, on my walks. I multitask mm. and at this particular- No, I totally get it. I've got the book next to my bed and I even like to listen to it as I go to sleep. Like- Me too. You know, so I, I just love audiobooks. So I stuck it out and I will say that it gets a little bit better, but Thierry in the chat is experiencing the same issue and Thierry, Thierry's been in the book club for a while. So I'm guessing that uh, he's heard Simon Vance on quite a few books before as well. I'm at the halfway part like or more than halfway now so i'm kind of like reacclimatizing. so it no longer sounds like dune narrator it's like becoming its own but uh, um, um. you still don't <laughs> like it that's all i'm just using noises instead of words to describe it. are that's we getting okay. into uh are we jumping into our overall thoughts for this section and i also do want to point out i know Maud, you said even though it was only four chapters we read this week and the week before it was only four chapters like they're still pretty sizable chapters it's not necessarily a, a breezy read like they're this they're one too was lo felt longer this yeah a lot uh, all right let's do let's do impressions on this chapter because honestly guys i think that she's stretch mm. it mm. feels like she's got the nine books as zelda <laughs> <laughs> 
Feels like she's got the nine Happy books. Yeah. Did Zelda yeah. fetch you the book? Did she bring you the book? She's like happened? your leg. Bring her up. She's brushing past my ankles and she's too oh, cute for it. So. God, she's so cute. She's, she's a so permanent cute. puppy. Too cute. Um, oh, there's there's hi, a couple cute. things we, we can kind of get into, but I like this comment from Brad Easton in the chat. Brad says, I loved how this section literally answered our question from last week where we asked how they know English right away. I called out, hey, when I got to that section. Me too. And I definitely appreciated that and I like that, but I agree with you, Mod. I feel that it is, well, it's two things for me. I liked this section a little bit less than the first section, to be honest. Hmm. And I think that the two things are, I do feel as though things are dragging out just a bit, just a bit. Dragging, dragging out. Things that, uh, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> you know what? I'll take a drink for that pun. Okay. It's dragging up. Mm -hmm. Oh, Zelda. But secondly. I kiss those little paws. For me, that ear. the thing is, for me, is that on top of that, on top of the action being a little slow, the story taking a little too long for my taste, my personal taste, I feel as though the writing itself is a little too English and proper. Where I'm I, there's no such thing, Hector. That is, that's the most delightful part. I love that. There is, there is. The narrator is even English. And so, and he, actually, I will give credit to Simon Vance. He spoke fluent French in the Ooh. Yeah. Very good. He did a really Very good, good job of that. But I, I love that pompous kind of polite wank. I, love it. I do too, depending on what the situation is. And I know last week I said like, one of my favorite genres is British people being proven wrong. And so I like when those moments happen in the story, I think I just wanted more of that. And I wanted more of Lawrence for as proper as he is to bring to the story like, wait, why do we do things this way? Why don't dragons, why aren't they allowed to do this? Or why aren't they encouraged to do this? I feel I mean, like he is though. There's a little bit of that, but not enough for me to, it still felt mostly prim and proper. Everybody's playing by the rules. Lawrence is absolutely adhering to all of the different customs and rules that there are. And all, and, and as we go through all the rules, I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. But good sir, there is a reason why we'll, rules are in place, especially when a war is on. Then if we haven't gotten to the fun chapter where all the rules are broken and like a cool, you know, I mean, aerial yeah. move is yeah. done where everyone's like, whoa, where did Lawrence come up with that one? Then I guess I've just been a little bit bored in this section. You know what I mean? Like, Well, actually, it's that, not that the rules are to be broken. It's that he won't adhere to them to begin with. Mm. But Which is to be more loose. He will not, not conform to proper. the way of the dragon. I don't know. I, well, people in the chat are agreeing with you guys. Uh, the Tamaranian says, is anyone else concerned? Nothing is actually going to happen in this book. It's clear to me that though enjoyable, the first book is to set the table. Um, Nathan S says, loving it. The pacing feels perfect for me. Jay Bundtrock says, my overall thought is get to a dragon battle already. Jay um, Bundtrock. Hey, Bundtrock. Bundtrock. One truck. Um, perfectly splendid. Yes. Um, I <laughs> still really like it. I don't know. I like the world. I like the um, the pacing doesn't bother me, and I I do love a good British upper crust drama. Um, and I I do like the world building, and maybe it is because I like the world building and have already decided like, oh, I want to read all of these books. So I'm not really like get to the, I'm also not a big like get to the action person necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, but I do, I really, I got really excited at the addition of lady writers and- I knew it. And also, yeah, of course. Also. That was the whole reason I picked this book. <laughs> And, um, but I also really like the, what happens with, um, is it Raskin? And how he like thinks he Rankin. found it. Rankin, Rankin, like Rankin and Bass. He thinks he's found this like kind of chill, also upper crust guy and then realizes, oh God, the reason he's talking to me and no one else is, isn't because I'm a Navy guy. It's because this guy's such an asshole. <laughs> And so mean to his dragon. That's the thing. Remember in anything like movies or TV, if you want to build an instant villain, if you want to make someone instantly unlikable, make them hurt an animal yep. or a mm -hmm. child. Like yep. that's like whether they yell at a kid or they kick a cat instantly, you're like, he's dead to me. That's an asshole. We need to see justice. And it's really interesting here that the norm is to take really bad care of animals. 
And I'm still struggling. I mean, it's making a little bit more sense now that, you know, we're more than halfway through the book. Um, I still very much struggle to see that as a believable concept. I understand dog fights, like dragon fights, like if it was kind of to weaponize animals, I kind of get that. But they have made them an asset in a war. So everything is still pointing to the fact that these are magnificent beasts that are helping and aiding and a crucial element. So to see poor freaking Levitas, but oh. Levitas to be like, just want, and the fact that they can speak means that they are so more personalized, oh you know? God. Like imagine, like I forget that my dog can't talk most of the time, but imagine if Zell's just like, I just want to thank you for hugging me at night or thank you for dinner. Like I would give, I already would give the world to this thing. Like, but imagine being able to communicate. And so you've added another layer to making these dragons the most incredible worshiping kind of things on the planet. Mm -hmm. So for them to be treated like shit, I'm like, but it's really just Rankin who does that. And I think, you know, the other ones are just kind of norms where they're like, oh, well, they're, they are these, you know, wild, magnificent beasts. They can do their own thing. They like it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But I feel like Rankin, because he, A, he sort of has inherited this sort of dragon writing from his family and he wasn't raised there and he's just a prick. Um, to me, it seems like he's just, he just finds it uncivilized and is above it all and is treating the dragon like a servant that he has no respect for. Yeah. Um, and it makes me very sad. And I hope that- um, He dies a miserable Le death. <laughs> no, I hope that um, uh, Levitus uh, rejects him and is like, I won't take this shit anymore. Mm -hmm. I hope he builds up his confidence I'm sure, and it's I'm like, sure that, no, sir, I need a new writer because he can do that. I'm sure that will happen. Do you guys remember one of the early episode of Pokemon where Ash finds a Charmander that's like abandoned in the woods and it's almost dead because it's raining and the little flame on the Charmander tail is almost put out. And then Ash is like, somebody is abusing this animal and he's trying to convince the animal to like get away from its master, but it doesn't because it's so loyal. And then at the end of the episode, he has to like, like the Charmander does it actually decide to go and be with Ash and Ash is like, I'll take care of you. Anyway, it's kind of like that. Yeah. I also feel like I want to give the the story as much credit as possible in terms of its world building. I know in the chat, there were some people saying, yeah, see the Tamarine said, yes, Hector. I remember that episode of Pokemon from 1996. Yeah, me too. Uh, I feel like maybe it was 98. It doesn't matter. Maybe earlier. <laughs> Black Belt 23 says, it's weird because I think the dragons are more used as bomber planes instead of actually using the dragons to attack because they have the whole team on the dragons throwing bombs off. And mm -hmm. then yeah. they follow up with, it's weird because things like this aren't explained well. Um, I want to give the most credit to the story of the world in terms of the world building. And I just am trying to sit back and go, I'm sure that I'll have it explained to me whenever we get to it. But those issues are still prevalent this far into the story, like that you brought up, Mod. I liked learning about how one of the first emperors of China was a dragon. And I'm like, okay, so they've been around forever. Like they've been around, it's not just a recent discovery. Yeah, these myths, yeah. Right, these myths are real, but it's still yeah. making me question. I'm like, okay, does every part of the world have dragons? Does Africa have dragons? Does North Amer South America have dragons? You know, I, I, I keep wanting to get to that stuff. And it also reminds me of, how about that Butterfree episode? It's great, Nerdist. Don't distract me. It also reminds me of the first How to Train Your Dragon movie where Hiccup, essentially, he sums up the theme of the movie when he says the line, like, everything we know about them is wrong. When he's, like, writing in his journal about how he's learning and just observing them and learning new things and everything that is in their teachings about dragons is actually incorrect. That's the whole point of that movie and then two and three kind of build on that. I feel like that's what's eventually going to happen here, but I still am like, okay, if Lawrence knows some stuff, but not everything, can he tell us the stuff we don't know yet? Is it, you know, is it just going to come up when we like launch into battle? I also, speaking of the bomb, the bombers working on the dragons, I was having a tough time with figuring out the size of the creatures themselves because I'm so used to dragons being like one person can fit on me only kind of a size. You know what I mean? That when we got to those parts where, uh, Temeraire is like picking up um, Lawrence and like he can hold him in his hand like a little cage. I'm like, that's a huge drag. This is a small well, level. That's why he's, he's the second largest, right? Maximus right. is the Maximus. 
not all of them uh, are that big, so they might have less riders, but he has this big crew and they're all just like, got these carabiners hooked up to the, the I loved that part. I, I thought that um, when they go to rescue Vic, Vic, Victori, Victorious, You'd think, Trevor but Dragon? it's Victorious. Vic, Vic, yeah, it's something like that. But Victorious. Um, <laughs> the because it was it was very easy for me to understand the mechanics of it, where you know they're climbing up and they've all got their little like hangout places and they can swap by like almost like sideways rock climbing. Yeah. Um, mm. and just transferring themselves over, and I thought that part was just really interesting and also like you just kind of threw them into it so then you know uh temeraire gets hurt and it's just like doesn't have you know this giant ass dragon at the on the right part of his body so he's like oh god <laughs> trying to tip over um or about to tip over and drop everyone but i thought that part was really cool as well okay all right, well, that's everyone's first impressions. Let's get into the book, shall we? Yeah. All right, really quickly, Lachlagen. Oh, I love the name. I love it. And I actually, because this is what happens when Simon Vance is reading to me, I go, hmm, that's a word. Let me go off on a trail of thought for 15 minutes and then I'll meet you back here. Like, yeah, and I've missed most of it. Um, do you think Loch is Scottish for lake? <laughs> that's uh, all. Yes, I do, Mark. <laughs> yeah, like Loch. Loch Ness. I and I was it. and I was just like on a massive tangent for so long, being like, got to be like, do you like a loch? And they're like, oh, your leg? Yeah, the loch. <laughs> so that's what the book was for me. I'm here to see the tapestries. Yeah. <laughs> I've just realized I've undone my dress accidentally. Hey, anyway, it was just too tight and I tried to loosen it and now it's boom. If you think that's bad, guys, just this past week. Uh, 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 me and the in the in the fam or the roomies were rewatching Shrek, and I just realized that Lord Farquaad is named that because he's supposed to sound like Lord Fuckwad. I just realized that. Yeah. Oh, Farquaad. You didn't know? Okay. If I did, I forgot. So now, <laughs> as an adult, I'm like Farquaad. Oh, Farquad. got it. Yeah. Oh. Funny. Not my gumdrop buttons. <laughs> <laughs> You're so dreamy, Lane. Alrighty, so Lachlagen. Still love saying it. Lawrence and Temere arrive at Lachlagen for training. Yeah. Before you start, I went like ham on the summary. So, it, so there's a lot of detail that you don't, we'll just see. Just see how you feel. How do you say celeritus? Like that. Celeritus? I don't know. You're listening to it. Celeritus. Celeritus is what I would think, but well, that's what it is because that's. What I'm not listening to it. Simon says Celeritus. Yeah, great. Uh, there, Lawrence meets Celeritus, a dragon who trains dragons and some other men. Unfortunately, Lieutenant Granby, obviously a friend of Lieutenant Doze, does not like Lawrence and is extremely rude to him. I like Lawrence in his position of leadership because he was like, "That's kind of unacceptable. You shouldn't talk to me like that." Uh, and I like that moment. Um, yeah. Of course, this continues to ruffle. You gotta nip it in the bud. He'd rather be, you know, he doesn't care about being liked. He wants to do the job well and take care of Temeraire and like, you know, he gets more flexible with the, I think he gets more flexible with his sort of stiffness as he goes on and starts calling them by, you know, their names instead of their ranks. But I do like that he, yeah, he's just like, no, you can't talk to me like that, dude. But you got to put out the fire before the kitchen burns, mm -hmm. you know. So you just yes. got to you got to address it. It's, mm -hmm. it's beating up, beating up the biggest guy in the yard first day, so that everybody knows right. not to mess with you. Uh, anyway, uh, Lawrence continues to ruffle feathers when he gives Temeraire a bath. He takes his harness off for comfort and asks after the comfort of another rider's dragon, Levitas. Now. You can just picture him, super small, super eager to please. Ugh, um, I feel so bad for him. <laughs> and he's just like, hey, um, that's, a, that's really nice. I've never had that before. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, everyone's heart breaks. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Uh, my 
this in my heart, maybe. I also like that we are building out sort of the crew. Like this is the mm-hmm. logic behind it. What does it take to have dragons? Like, you know, there's stable men, stable boys. There's, you know, what does it look like for dragons? So we meet these young boys in training, one who seems to be uh, quite proactive and eager to join his crew. Again, as a leader, it's so interesting to be like, hey, that's unacceptable. Don't talk to me like that. But also mm, you're kind of brown nosing, but I love how excited you are to grow. And like mm-hmm. you love this and your passion is building. I I think that's really cool as well. Uh, Hector, why did you just smile then? Um, I don't know. Some Something someone said, either you or Rachel, but I forgot. Okay. Um, also, uh, Miss Necromancer says, I felt so bad for Temerer to experiencing dragon racism. From the other dragons. Oh yeah, because he looks so different. He is different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. honestly i didn't it's i just saw that as schoolyard you make you bully any like that's kids are so cruel and you bully anyone who's different and i was like man even dragons aren't exempt from that crap mm-hmm. it's playground <laughs> bullying bullshit yeah it's, ev- it's everywhere um chapter number six dragon training the next day they begin training with Celeritus, the regal copper uh the regal copper dragon maximus uh, who totally should have Optimus Prime for him, but that's cool. Uh, and his rider, Berkeley. They are all impressed to see that Temeraire can hover in the air, something that uh, Solaritus has never seen before in 200 years of training. So again, we are seeing Temeraire get better and better and better, uh, be treated well, have a really good relationship with Lawrence. And so he's a target, really. Mm-hmm. And how is he hovering in the air? Is he actually flapping his wings or is he just like this? How does he that- says he, he basically says he like, turns them the other way. So I feel like it's almost like treading water where he's like gotcha, but just going back and okay. forth kind of. Yeah. But he's like a yeah. hummingbird. Like when you put pressure on the rudder. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I thought of it as like, yeah, when you're basically like pulling and pushing at the same time to stay in one place. I tell you, man, this thing would lend itself so well to an animated or live action something. Oh, you know? totally. Just to I would a show. Them. Give me a show. I want it. Yeah. yeah. Could be cool. Hector. Can you please give me a show? I'll work on it. Um, do you want it live action or animated? Hector, animated. she said she wanted a show. I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to have to explain that learning from the egg shit earlier. But other than that, it'll be pretty much okay. the okay. Berkeley tells Lawrence about being assigned a dragon egg and that he had to wait four years for Maximus to hatch. At supper, Lawrence meets Captain Catherine Harcourt and is mildly scandalized by her attire and presence. How much did you love this moment, Rach? Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. And also I wanna know what her deal is with um, uh, Granby. You think they got history? Because I, I feel like, or like she has a crush on him or he has a crush on I don't know, that, that whole dinner sequence where she because everyone else seemed to like him okay. Like he seems like he's a, an okay guy. He just didn't like Lawrence because his friend was supposed to get that dragon. Mm. Um, but she just seemed really uncomfortable next to him specifically. So that I was just intrigued by that. Mm. Do you guys want Catherine to uh, be a romantic love interest to Lawrence and vice versa or no? Do you want them to stay platonic coworkers? I think it's like interesting that Lawrence hasn't given a shit about any other ones, really. Um, and then all of a sudden, he's like trying to win her favor. Like he wants to spend more time with her. I think maybe he's yeah. I'm not sure, but it's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Because I it's hard to tell how old she is. Because she's younger for a writer. So there's that element. And how old is Lawrence again? How old is he supposed to be? Because I keep I feel picturing... like he's supposed to be like 30. Okay. That's okay. what I'm picturing. Because his poor Mrs. Elena, Alora. I've already she's forgotten. been waiting. She's been waiting a while. She's yeah. like, I'm a dead and now she's in spinster territory. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun here. <laughs> uh, we are learning. I, I, one of my favorite parts about this book is learning um, more and more about the different types of dragons. I think yeah. that's really, really interesting. That's a big thing. So the long wings and what, why and how they are different. So Catherine's dragon is called Lily. 
And it's a beautiful moment where it's like, well, how did you come up with the name? And she kind of was like, oh. Um, how did you come up with your name? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, oh, she gets uh, defensive. Yeah. I'll be honest. Which I totally yeah. get. Yeah. I get that. Where you, if she, you're like one of the only girl dragon riders, like you're accepted, but not entirely. And there's this new guy who comes in and is like, he called you miss instead of captain. And so you're like, well, how'd you get your, like, I can totally see myself doing that. <laughs> Yeah, 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 especially when I was a teenager, being like, "What? Do yeah, I'm a girl, so what?" <laughs> Wait, you've never seen my mother. And Lily works because it's Lily the long wing. Like, yeah, I know, it's so cute. Uh, and the long wings are a type of dragon that will only accept female riders. Lawrence encounters yeah. another girl in training. The boy that he was so impressed with the night before is actually Cadet Emily Rowland. Now. If you are listening to this moment, Simon Vance is narrating the fact that eerily, Emily didn't actually sound all that different to the other boys. As, has he put on a voice like this? And I was like, the damn words, son, are in front of you and you're reading them. And he didn't do it right. Anyway, Tremorare feels left out. You are calling it Tremorare, this whole doc. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Ooh, ooh, Tremor. Well, that'll, we're coming to that. We're coming to Tremor in the end of the book. <laughs> I'm so you? uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of book is this like going to be? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tremor, wait, uh, feels left out by the other dragons, much like Lawrence does with the other writers. But Lawrence makes a new friend in a high society courier named Rankin and accompanies him on a trip to get Temeraire a collar. However, he learns that the neglected Levitas is actually Rankin's dragon. And he's just like, dude, dead to me, which is fair. Yeah, yeah. Immediately loses respect for him. Yeah, um, I like that. I thought that that was, again, leaning into the idea that Lawrence is going to be the character who is the reader surrogate, the audience surrogate, who's going to question the rules as they are established in this world, though, especially the ones that, that, end up resulting in these creatures who are essentially characters because they can freaking talk being disrespected or neglected or abused or used or whatever. So I like that. I thought that that was a good um, story uh, point for Lawrence to, to just get so heated, man. He loves his dragon so freaking much, man. He gets so mad. BFFs, my dear. Uh, I think Lily and Tamara get it on. Oh, Antonio Vargas says, I want to adop adopt Levitas. Also, I just did a real quick find and replace in the script. So now it's all correct. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's quite amazing. Um, and then Adam T says, Rankin is the worst. That's right, Adam. Uh, yeah. Let's. We're on to chapter seven already. We are flying mm -hmm. through like Tamara's training. <laughs> and now that Tamara has been fitted for his proper harness, training begins in earnest. Delaritus is a merciless teacher and Lawrence has to learn the ins and outs of dragon riding at breakneck pace. And just as they are starting to gather and test out men for their crew, including Granby, James and Volley arrive and inform the riders of an attack nearby. Lawrence and Temeraire are to help bring the injured Victoratius. Victor Victor Victoriatious? Victoriatious. Victoriatious? Uh, yeah. No, it's chess. It's T I U S, right? Let us know yeah. in the chat how you phonetically say that one. Yeah. Which, I mean, I listened to the book. How come this is not sticking at all? Sorry. I know. I was going to say, I thought you were going to be our pronunciation. I really expert. am. Vic Victorious. Back to heel. In the rush to get underneath the giant Victorious. Temeraire, uh, Temeraire is injured by the dragon's claws and his harness almost breaks. And as Lawrence climbs out of his position to try and fix it, Victoria just falls heavier on Temeraire, causing Lawrence to lose his footing. Can I be real with you guys? Did you feel the tension in this moment? Uh, no, I'll be honest with you. This is a moment that that I was a bit confused with as I was going through it and, and realized, oh, wait, I am picturing Temeraire's size completely off and i had been oh, for yeah. a while but it was a thing where if the story was telling me now temeraire was this big now he had grown this big i missed it or it didn't sink in right it at the start he was putting food back like nobody's business and, right. was growing up and, and he was already up. like nine tons when he was a right. like and wee baby it's, but it's, yeah it 
one, one thing to say nine tons, this creature is nine tons, sure. but like you got to give me like the there. length of a Navy ship or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. Then I'm like, I, okay. I, got, I think that having all of those people on him in some way, like I had the same thought where I was like, wait, they're all on the dragon? Yeah. Because when that like, even when they're like practicing stuff, I was like, well, yeah. how are they going to do that from the ground? And then I realized I was like, okay, so there's there's a lot more space here to work with. I didn't think that Lawrence was going to get hurt, but I thought Temeraire might, you know, say, fuck this other dragon and save Lawrence and then get in really big trouble. I really thought that was going to happen. And he was thinking about it. I also you know? didn't quite understand the, that's the thing is that this is, um, let me, I want to talk about the writing for a second, because I do think that Naomi Novik is a fantastic writer, but from my preference, I believe that there's a little bit too much of a kind of a cold, distant, describing, you know, clinical kind of approach sometimes in terms of how, and maybe that clinical coldness that I'm feeling that's sometimes very like medical and procedural is just this sort of British stuffy upper crusty vibe, right? It's very Downton Abbey, maybe. But She's an some, American author. She's an but, American author. Right. But uh, but listen, but Naomi's definitely playing in a specific world. Like, like Novik is coming in and being like, I want this to be Master and Commander with Dragons. I want this to be the pinnacle of of British warfare against the French. You know, it's very historical. And it's it's what I'm saying is that it's not typically um emotional. It's oftentimes kind of dry. And that's fine, but for me, as I'm reading through it and some of that kind of dryness and some of that language that's very like, oh, and then this happened and this is a procedure and then Lawrence did this and then this happened and then this happened and this is how he felt and then this versus some more maybe kind of like emotional mm -hmm. moments or some, some sort of breaks in the writing to really let you know like, hey, Lawrence is really hurting with this or, or Temeraire is emotionally distraught about this and it tends to kind of continue to go and go. When I got to this section, it felt very procedural where I was like, wait, 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 what's happening? Hang on, wait, wait. There's like a real action sequence happening right now that's very like threatening and there's a lot of danger. I didn't quite feel that. I did feel it at the end when Lawrence or Temeraire sort of summed up what happened and summed up how they felt. I did also feel that when after the fact, Lawrence confronted his dragon and was like, hey, listen, man, you can't go for me if another dragon's life is at stake. They're more important to the fleet you understand that and that made me go oh shit i guess okay i guess tamara almost like dropped this dragon to get yeah yeah get lawrence so i, I think he was going to for sure right some of that language is just sort of uh, miss necromancer says i can see what hector is saying because he felt the same way during the golden compass i did and again this is just my own sort of personal preference oh, golden compass being as great did. of a story as it is and as well written as it is it just felt a little too pinkies mm. up for me to kind of get in there and, and latch on and connect. I think it's very helpful. I didn't know this until this week in the physical copy of the book. And I assume the digital copy of the book as well. The, 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 the guys, yeah. the ones you guys are reading in the back, there's a sketchbook of the, the professorial oh, character, yeah. Sir Edward Howe. And there are drawings of dragons and there's like, well, a that's simple. extremely helpful. There, yeah. That, look, at all, look at all these. I open, Yeah. I opened it on my computer. Yeah, look at all these guys and how they fit onto the dragon. Mm -hmm. And so, like, now I can kind of understand yeah, how big this. Begin. Well, I guess it would technically be, you'd like, but it's fun to reveal it, I guess. But yeah, this is a this is a yellow reaper, and I would love if there were specific. We've got long wing celestial, which I guess is is a uh, temeraire. That's a, he's a celestial. Is that right, or am I? Is that wrong? Royal. Cop that's him. Yeah, because he's got the little beard. I think the little yeah. tendril. And that's him. So that's kind of helpful to know. But like, just to have the scale with a human, with yep. this specific, I'm like, give me that scale drawing for every, you know, breed of dragon, I think would be very helpful. But looking uh, at the drawing. I think, you know, well, when we, there was a huge portion about putting a harness and it almost feels like a saddle in a way. So like yeah. immediately you just think one body can fit on the. Yeah, the, but it's, versus, it's versus all extra. these. But, but then they also explain that there are these like loops for the carabiners for the like little uh, cadets who are so stoked to be a part of it. That's interesting, Hector, because I feel like I've been so emotional throughout 
this whole thing. Um, and let me tell you, the most emotional characters are Temeraire himself and Lawrence. So I will absolutely admit that. That is true. They are the most emotional characters. For sure. And it's, yeah. it's a style thing, too. I think even though it is, you know, pretty British, I feel like the... You... I feel like I can sense their feelings even though they're not expressing them outright especially like Temeraire doesn't really even understand certain like he's so smart and intelligent but he's not lived very much so he's not like street smart I guess mm -hmm. or lock smart man um, and I think but, a lot of it is you know I think you're very smartly Rachel kind of reading between the lines and picking up on on what these men and less women, fewer women, but what these men and women are dealing with as they try to do their job, it's all kind of under the surface. You know what I mean? I, there hasn't yeah. been like outbursts of characters like just yelling at each other or being like, well, this is how I feel. And this is what's happening. Like there hasn't really been that. Yeah, because it's just not, even even in the, the aerial core, it's still not really like that. It's just not very British. And even um, when he got reprimanded, it was still, I'm noticing that you're you're interfering with other dragons. We don't do that. Well, also because, um, uh, God, what's his name? Uh, Solaritus um, is also like, I kind of don't blame you. <laughs> like, I wish that you could interfere, but you can't because yeah. that's a bad precedent. Um, but it does feel like, you know, he basically was like, I rejected him. Like I took on his grandpa and his dad and then was like, mm, no, thank you to this one. <laughs> so, you know, and also that, that scene felt really emotional to me too, where you, you, you can tell how much he misses his original writers, both of them. He's had the grandfather and the father. And then Lawrence is like, oh God, like, Temeraire is gonna live so much longer than me. And and he's so connected to him. Like I don't, I think Lily and um, Catherine, sorry, invite to a meeting. Um, Catherine, even though I quit my outlook, anyway, Catherine and Lily seem to be in very, like a very similar uh, sort of mindset, you know? Um, and Berkeley is sort of begrudgingly loves Maximus and stuff like that. But Lawrence and Temerer feel like Temerer is never going to take another writer, you know, like I just don't, I can't, he's so, they just care for each other so much. And that, that feeling of both of them being protective of one another or wanting the other one to feel okay or not wanting to embarrass the other one, all of these like little things just kind of added up to me, I think that just every time there's a moment like that between them, I'm like, oh God, they love each other so much. I, I really- <laughs> Rachel, are you getting Golden Compass vibes from this? No, I'm not. Okay. I, really I mean, I guess, I guess I guess get the sort of somewhat of the writing style and it being sort of no, British. I mean about having like a like the 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 demon. Oh, the demons. Actually, yeah, I, it does. Their their relationship does that not. Connection. So, yeah, it it feels. Yeah, I guess I guess yes. There's so much more. If you severed their connection, it is the most. Disgusting, it's worse than death. You it's know. worse than death. Yeah. Yeah. But that's universal. Whereas I feel like all of the all of the writers have a connection with their dragons, but theirs feels really special. Yeah. So what far, even though what? they all the other ones, like it, at first Lawrence and do the reader are like, oh God, like uh, Levitas is being so neglected. Are they all like this? And then you realize, oh no, it's just this one dude. Everyone else at least takes care of them, cares mm -hmm. for them, but also kind of lets them do their thing until Lawrence shows up and is like yeah give him a bath every night dudes and like <laughs> and then all the other dragons are like mm, that sounds kind of fun can we try that and then that's how he starts bonding with all the other riders as well the sort of newbies in training and i i really liked that scene too in the lake where you know um lily is a little bit older so she kind of 
just like is like all right you guys splash around in maximus and temeraire like play fighting and they just totally dunked on <laughs> literally dunked on yeah. yeah i just that whole second and he's just so grateful to be invited and they're all kind of having a good time and and um but i don't i just yeah i don't see that connection the same way mm -hmm. um feels more universal in the golden so compass if, if lily's older and um Aaron has, Aaron has looked it up in the chat and says that uh, Catherine's only 20. So Lily would have had previous writers as well. No, she hatched early. Uh, that, that was what she was saying. She was like, I didn't know what to name her because we thought we had like another five years. Um, so they've just been in training because they didn't have this full formation of dragons yet. Mm -hmm. And so... It, it feels like or um uh so was was Catherine training from like age 15 to now she's 20 kind of a thing i'm yeah. guessing seven from seven or eight that's when they go into yeah, yeah and, and i think she was probably a cadet like um roland um who is like probably 14 or something like that maybe younger mm -hmm. but she said like i was in edinburgh and they like rushed me here overnight because I barely made it in time for the egg to hatch because we thought we had five more years. And so I had no idea what to name her because I thought I had more time. Um, so I think they've just been training there for a while, waiting for, you know, Maximus took forever to hatch. So they've been waiting there. And then they finally get, you know, another bigger dragon that can fit in this formation so that they can support, which is where we end in this section where they're like, all right, time to go. Yeah. Also, Hector, back to the conversation a while ago about being to, uh, being able to emotionally connect with what was going on. You were not alone. Um, there were a lot of people that had discussions uh, about how they feel and what they felt as well. Um, I feel like it's, again, it's all there. It's just right there on the surface. And I feel as though it would just take a little bit more of a different style maybe of writing to kind of really get me to like sink my teeth into that because it's not I'm not saying it's a fault of the story or plot itself again you go back to the premise of this thing and as we're talking through this book I'm so impressed with the premise of like okay if this is a world and an alternate universe that we know nothing about but it's also still kind of earth history because you know Napoleon Bonaparte is leading <laughs> France right now and like attacking and invading and so there's Europe and so there's the Americas and everything else it's so smart to start this premise with, okay, here's a Navy guy and they're on a ship and then they find an egg. So it's not the typical, oh, we have the procedure for what to do with a dragon egg and we know exactly what to do. And that's a great premise. And, and again, Lawrence is supposed to be this audience surrogate so that we can learn about the world and learn about what his role and his dragon's role is supposed to be before we get to, and while we're in the thick of a cool battle thing. But I just feel as though, it's a tricky balance. And I think the book is airing a little on the side of, yeah, you know what this is, right? Versus, no, 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 give me a little bit more. Just explain it to me like I'm a little dumber than I am. It's like, yeah. pretend as though I really am from our universe, peering into your universe. You got to just explain just a teensy bit more and then I'll be on board and then we can we can go, we can do it, you know? But I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm kind of the, I, I, maybe because I like to try to like figure stuff out. Mm -hmm. Not that you don't don't or anything but i just like oh, I, I, I would much rather <laughs> have a little bit of like hmm, what's happening here than like mm -hmm. here's what's like in a movie when they like especially movies i think that like have been edited to all the end of time and then at the beginning it's like even in his dark materials the show yeah. that was like one of the main things that bugged me was the first episode they're like here's the world and it's like ah I like that you're thrown into it and you have to like figure it out instead of like, and everyone has a that, demon and they all, you know. That can be so fun. I'm picturing a live action movie or TV series about this. Can you imagine a scene or a trailer or a preview or something where there's like a bunch of stuffy sort of British, you know, uh, military people in its 1805 or whatever it is. And it's like, you know that they're like, oh, this is like, ship combat era uh uh you know war where they're getting cannons ready and they're on ships and they're and they're 
buttoning down the mizzen mass and whatever they're saying that's like oh my gosh what's happening what's happening and then there's just some stuffy british guys that are like is the regiment ready sir of course we go at your command fun then then make it so do it right and then it just cuts to like a dragon taking off like that's crazy because that's yeah. such a compelling idea to have like and then uh, having, having a dragon come in that's dope and that would be great for a trailer but i think once you're in it i want a little bit more of of um exposition just a just a teensy bit especially because and i got it at this point i pretty much got it and i feel like this is all we're going to get in this story and maybe going forward but that whole thing about when we learn how dragons know the language they learn it through the egg i was like that's a that is a beautiful like and that's what i thought it was just, that's, that's kind it. of what i assumed yeah it's a perfect enough of an but i was glad that they said it because i knew you both were like asking about it we needed like, it good and i don't yeah, think no. it was switched up this too late uh, I really want to interject with the fact that they started doing it and there was a really easy way to deliver all of this information in not necessarily a spoon way, but she made Tamara be obsessed with literature. Mm -hmm. you know the fact that he's been a naval captain and that he's going into a new area, which would require a textbook or information and he looked at the dragon manual which was very kind of bare leaf again i'm like thinking why if this is such a thing in a process why was there 40 words in one chapter about it uh, but i thought that that could be really cool that they would learn together and he's like well this is what it means to be in the air corps and um and Temere was like read me more tell me about it and they could learn together just have that little bit more of a moment Maybe it existed and the editor was like, get rid of it. The audience is not stupid. Maybe. Uh, I mean I Well, I just I think that the the book of like um Chinese dragon like history myths gives you a little bit of that. But I also think the art the aerial corps is very paranoid about their whole situation getting out to anyone not in there. So I I interpreted that as like we don't need this getting like picked up by some Navy dude who's like, uh, they're just dragons training dragons out here and they don't have riders. And, you know, the, the English people are paying with their taxes for, you know, all this kind of stuff. And the, the like sort of plan to be like, yeah, hey, just get rid of them. Just, you know, genocide. Uh, we don't need them. We're not at war. And so they, they don't want anyone to know. So there's all these misconceptions about people not wanting to be in the aerial core that it's like offensive to be in it even mm. though obviously a you know third son of a duke of whatever is part of it they're trying as much as they can they don't want outsiders in there they don't want people who don't understand it and they don't want any of it to get out mm. um and also i feel like the british don't seem to know a lot about dragons no actually, they and they don't fun. they don't like they don't have the greatest you know selection of dragons either they keep like lose they lose like one big one and they're like oh shit you know the the other armies have more of them they have different types they have like breeding and stuff and to me it seems like they're just kind of taking what they can get and almost just making it up as they go along a little bit because they don't yeah, speak, like, Warren seems to understand dragons more than the actual train besides obviously uh uh why do i keep forgetting his name Franken? uh solaritus Being like he's an actual dragon so he obviously yes. gets it but um I also i'm a little bit confused i mean there's a couple of different types of chinese dragons yes but in all chinese mythology the dragon is a an air worm with wings little wings you know like the mm -hmm. body shape is a lot different so seeing the book and having this dragon be very much of the european descent of dragons yeah okay okay he's a long wispy dude but i'm confused again because he's getting these guys right it's an like interesting koi fish it's an interesting point because it's kind of like i totally agree mod it's like okay if we're not going to use that that sort of chinese or eastern mythological thing where like a dragon can just kind of float in the air even if it has tiny little wings wow. because it's unrealistic i'm like Y'all having your dragon speak though, you know what I mean? Like it, it's, is it magic or not? Is it like, how far are we gonna sort of take that idea? 
Um, but uh, I, I, I do think that's interesting. It's, it's like I, some of the some of the other books have slightly different. Like it, I don't know. I'm looking at like fan artists. I feel like it is very. It is at least somewhat <laughs> similar. God, you're just yeah, brushing like, dirt I, away. That's not. You I have don't. to. You have to go up and down oh. as the other part's going up and down. <laughs> My favorite tattoo. Your cat. <laughs> <laughs> go, Pan, go. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the unlikely MVP of this section, and that is the Sorry. fact that um, Granby saves the day here. I loved that. I really liked that because it felt like he was being such a dick and he knew it, but he's also good at his job when he's not focusing on being such a prick to this guy. This is a military mindset where it's like, even if you hate these people, your duty is always, it always takes precedence. So I liked that moment, but it's also, you know, we had it, we mentioned it all the time with Alpha Book Club, like that one event that brings people together. So if you're in duress mm -hmm. together and you like experience yeah. their shit and or a moment, it kind of bonds you and that's what Granby now has with Lawrence and the fact that he's a, like he's helped Tamaria as well the person that he the thing mm, that he loves the most creature creature person creature. Just not person Character. yeah and I also I also liked that he you know not only his duty but um because he still was being snippy but once things got harried when they were trying to save this other dragon, he kind it just kind of melts away and he's just like doing his work. And that's when Lawrence is like, oh God, he's the best one so far. This is so annoying. And so when he offers it to him, I liked that too, because he was like, I'm not gonna embarrass you by like offering it to you when you're gonna, if you're gonna say no, there's gotta be some weirdness around that. Even if you're not like extreme in the Navy and the fact that not only does um, uh, Granby accept, but then as they're walking, he's like, shit, I just, like, I'm really sorry. Like, I know I suck. And I really enjoyed that and feel like they're gonna have an interesting friendship, potentially, and one where they can be honest with each other and maybe like butt heads. But I think that's one of the best kind of friendships you can have when you can be honest with each other and call each other out on your shit. But also um, acknowledge and owning your shit. Like yeah, your that, own, exactly, that, yeah. That is such a rare, or can be a rare trait for people it's to pretty rare. I was out of line, my bad. Yeah, um, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Chapter eight. While recovering, Lawrence takes Temeraire and Levitas down to the lake uh, and I mean, I rewatched all of Avatar The Last Airbender and my favorite episode is when the Fire Nation kids go down to the island and they play beach volleyball mm -hmm. and they talk therapy. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh yeah, the therapy episode, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where they're like, burn it all down. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. um, playing beach volleyball, it, it was that kind of moment. And again, it's like they're able to let their scales down and have fun and play around and actually like have a reward for this hard work that they're putting in. Berkeley and Maximus decide to join them as do Catherine and Lily. You know that Catherine had the infamous moment where she starts removing particular clothes to get into the lake and Lawrence is like, I've never seen her like that before. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. She said she always been this beautiful or is it just this moment where the sun is perfectly reflecting off her hair and the shine of the lake is making her eyes bloom. Yeah, blah. Yeah. Um, but I find them smooching. That's yeah. Twenty and thirty is not that bad. I wouldn't, especially in the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, good point. No, it's bad now, but in the eighteen hundreds, not not as weird. I think. Also, I don't know if he's thirty. Yeah. Because people died really young back then. He might be like twenty five, <laughs> and already a captain. Mm, good point. If someone look it up. Then I won't feel like as much of a creep. So everyone's bonding in their downtime. And if there was a kegger, it would probably be on the shore and they would spread out. Unfortunately, though, when they get back to the courtyard, Rankin is there and he's pissed. He barks at Levitas and tells Lawrence and the cadets to leave his dragon alone. 
they fly off and Lily uh, spits a little acid in frustration when Catherine jumps to Levitas in uh, Levitas's defense. Lawrence gets snippy with her, even though he totally feels the same way. Uh, Lawrence and Tamara discuss Levitas and Rankin and the concept of duty. Lawrence asks Tamara to promise to save other dragons and then men before himself. And Tamara says, I cannot promise you that. And I will not promise you that because it is not likely that that will happen. And there's this moment of absolute defeat where Lawrence is like, I just don't know how to explain this to you. <laughs> it's irrelevant how many times you explain it to me and how you do it. The answer will be the same. And Rach, did you shed a tear or something? A little oh. bit. No bit. <laughs> Lawrence has to. I just love them so much, and I also really just want Levitas to. <sighs> like maybe one of the kids will take him or something. You mm. know, I don't know. He just deserves better, and I did like that. Um, uh, God, why is it so hard for me to say this name? Uh, Solaritas. Um, no. I don't know why I keep courageous. Like, it, just, it just disappears from my head every time I say it. But um, I did like that he sort of acknowledged and everyone else was kind of like, yeah, this sucks. Like not everyone is like this with their dragons, but he chose him and there's nothing we can do until he decides that he hasn't chosen him. I hope that happens in this book. Mm. So it sounds like Levitas, hold on, with the history of Rankin, uh, Rankin's father and grandfather being repped by Solaritus, when Solaritus said no, Levitas probably thought they were doing such a great job by going, oh, I'll take you then. Like picking up and making him feel better. So wouldn't Levitas, I mean, wouldn't Rankin appreciate him for that? Or does he resent Levitas for that? I just think he does not care about him at all. I think he... There needs to be more of a reason behind that for me to buy it. Because he's just a court. Well, because he's a snob. And he's rude. He's just a rude snob. And he, like, even the fact that everyone else introduced, everyone else introduced themselves as, like, you know, uh, Captain Catherine uh, of Lily. And he didn't say anything about his dragon. He said about his, like, dukedom or whatever. So he's just a stuffy... He's like a, a perfect kind of parallel to Lawrence, who's also a third son and from a semi-good family and trained in high society and, you know, has issue kind of letting some of that go. But he at least respects other people and his crew on either on, in the Navy or in the Aerial Corps and lo obviously loves his dragon, whereas uh, Granby is, or no, no. Whereas, God, why do I, all of the names. We need a chart, man. <sighs> it's Rankin. just my brain is like not saving them to so my, even though I wrote them a million times. Ra Raskin. Rankin. Right? Rankin. Rankin. Oh yeah, like that Rankin and Bass. That's how I'll remember it. Um, he just doesn't, he doesn't see dragons as worthwhile. And he doesn't see the other uh, riders as worthwhile. It's just yeah. He's a courier. His dragon needs to be available for when he goes to do stuff and otherwise like stay there and be quiet. It's like, tr it's he's treating him like a servant, like a, a horrible rich person would treat a servant. Like they're nothing. We and are out of time tonight. That flew oh, that last little chunk. It really time. did. Long story I short, Catherine and Lawrence are having a little bit of tension. Solaridus says, you know what, Rankin complained. You can't interview. Uh, they train with Lily's formation. Tamara is bored because he's just too talented. So Edward sends him a book of Chinese dragon myths so he doesn't feel so insecure when he starts to grow these new looks. Um, but Lawrence is embarrassed to realize that the tendrils means Tamara is coming of age. He's in puberty and he gives him a little like stroke and then he's like you're like oh no i don't know how i feel about that yeah. well your cat purrs when it's happy so it's just that i know but if that was cute until he was like oh he's coming of age and i was like so what is that i don't know the con those two things connected made me a little uncomfortable but i do like that now he's just like this new french dragon comes in and he's like 
I'm going to beat him. And he's got this whole Make rivalry. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a new little rivalry happening with Precursorus. Uh, also learns that if we learn about the dragon's learning language through the shells. Four, five chapters too late, if you ask me. Uh, Solaridus also tells Lawrence that the rivalry has been really good for Temeraire, you know, having competition, because otherwise, first he wasn't accepted, now he's too, way too far ahead. Um, but he's also more suited to be a formation leader or an independent, but they still need him to be in Lily's formation for now. Lawrence and Temeraire start to design their own formations just to keep him interested because he's gifted. Yeah, he's the he's the gifted kid who doesn't do their homework because it's too easy. Yeah, that was my brother. My that brother was me. Was a child genius. Also ADHD. So I was just like, I forgot my homework. Oops. Uh, we got a call to action. Your homework for next week. Finish the dang book. Also, bonus homework, especially for those that have read ahead and they are chewing at the bit for more to read. Get stuck into Haunting of Ashburn House. Because we are going to be getting into that by October 28th, I believe. We are discussing the whole book. In you an have to hour. read the whole book by the last week of uh, October. I last started. Wednesday in October. I started. Yeah, I did too. Get it out of the way. Start reading Haunting of Ashburn House. Remember, it's, it's an Aussie book by an Aussie author, which is really, really cool. But also, we're going to need a book next week. So let us know on Twitter. Using the hashtag Nerdist Book Club, what could we read next? Dresden Files. Cool. If you want to check out previous episodes of Nerdist Book Club, you can on Nerdist. The Amber Spyglass. Oh, no. Subtle Knife. I'm skipping ahead. Sorry. A Star Wars book. Any Star Wars book. Any Star Wars book. We just read a Star Wars book. I know. Let's do another one. We <laughs> actually, maybe, uh, it might be better off for next week, but I wouldn't mind the after show, everyone bringing a book to recommend and doing like a two. Oh, yeah. Why, why yeah let's do that straight after this oh of course we're heading to the after show yay geek bombs discord if you want access to that one all you have to do is just sign up for any perk on our patreon which is patreon.com slash geek bomb you'll get instant access to the discord meet us on hashtag reading and we'll be in the book club call where we'll be chatting thank you so much for watching this particular week hope you're enjoying the book and we'll see you next week goodbye Four also, we books. do. Oh my God, four animorphs books would be so good. Also, we do need a GoFundMe for Levitas. <laughs> Save Levitas. Aww. Get him out of his unhealthy 